All right. What's up? Hey, Dave. It's number 18. How you doing, pal? The Hall of Famer's here. Good to see you, buddy. How are you, man? I'm good. Appreciate you doing this. Thanks for coming down to Newman School to do this. This is pretty cool. Yeah. Don't make me do any reps, though. <laughs> yeah. All right? Are we going Don't worry. There? We don't want to see that. Let's come chat. Well, let's just jump in. Hey, man, on behalf of about a bazillion Colts fans, um, congratulations. Has it sunk in that you're going to the Hall of Fame? I think now that, that we're kind of getting closer and uh, having to kind of do some logistics, uh, had to kind of organize the seating chart the other day. So I'm, <laughs> I'm figuring out, okay, Ryan Deems here, probably need someone smaller sitting next to him, right? You know, probably shouldn't put him in yeah. Tarek uh, next no. to each other. So uh, it's getting closer. Uh, I'm excited, Dave, because it's a chance to see a bunch of old teammates. You know, when you're playing, you see these guys every day. And when you don't play because obligations and family commitments or whatnot, you just don't get together very much. So I'm probably excited for that as much as yeah. anything, just uh, having a chance to be around my, all my old, you know, Colts teammates and some college teammates and Bronco teammates. I'm excited. Going in as an Indianapolis Colt, what does that mean to you to represent Indianapolis going into Hall of Fame? It's a really big deal. No, it's a big deal. Look, I'm, I'm, you know, my gratitude to Jim Irsay and the Colts organization is off the charts. They drafted me in 1998. Everything that Jim told me he was going to do when I met with him at the Surf Club in Miami, maybe that was the name of it. Uh, cannot remember the name of it. It was a different place. Uh, but uh, Jim, I could just tell how committed he was to making Indianapolis a winner. And, you know, he hires Bill Polian and the architect and, you know, goes out and gets Tony Dungy when he becomes available. So, you know, it's not always the case where somebody kind of recruits you and tells you this is what we're going to do and they don't always end up doing it. Jim did it and uh, gave us every resource available. So, um, uh, and, you know, and to be reunited with Marvin, uh, Tony, Bill, Marshall Falk, to be going in on the same weekend, you know, as Edgerman James. Big deal. Probably, you know, maybe my favorite teammate of all time. Uh, it, it's really cool. So it's, um, and there's room for more Colts in there Yeah, as let's well. get Reggie Wayne. I'll say that. Yeah, let's get on the there's list, There's room, right? there's room. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm very proud to represent the Colts in the horseshoe in Canton. You're, I'm sure you've been reminiscing a lot, as I have been, because I've been watching you since 98 when you walked in the door. What flashes through your mind when you look back on, on the start of this journey with Indianapolis and the 14-year the ride that you had? Yeah. It was magical. Yeah, I think you just I think about a lot of people that have just been a part of it. So it's not really the moment points. you think about the people. I think about more of the people, you know. Uh, I mean, obviously, I think about certain moments, but, you know, I, I remember those moments because of the people yeah. that, were, that I was with, that were on that team, who my coaches were. I mean, I think about you know, getting drafted, flying to Indianapolis uh, from New York, Tom Moore and Bruce Arians giving me the playbook. And then I was back in Indianapolis three days later. Uh, they had me hold up at a signature inn on 38th Street. I wasn't really supposed to be in town yet. Technically, maybe a violation of the rules, but going big, Peyton, I, I, going I, wanted, big. I wanted to learn the offense and they said, come on in here. So yeah, I think about that, that rookie year, you remember Dave, it was a struggle. It was an adjustment period. Then all of a sudden, things kind of picked up a bit, as uh, uh, as, as Will Ferrell would say in Anchorman. That thing, that thing escalated a little bit. <laughs> we go from three and thirteen to thirteen and three fast, and yeah. now all of a sudden, I mean, everybody's kind of, oh my yeah. gosh, Indianapolis is is is, is for real, and, and they're kind of here to stay. I think it was really the message. This is not. This wasn't going to be a just a one year deal, and. Edgerin and Marvin kind of got their thing going. And so, um, you know, and then uh, get, having these great seasons, getting so close, you know, being disappointed in the end, but we just kind of kept, kept going. We never, we never yeah. stopped, never, Jim never broke up the band and said, hey, we got to change everything. We just sort of stayed the course. And, you know, we were talking about 2006 earlier, oh, you know, man. that was a special group. and. Uh, to, to win that night down in Miami to beat the Patriots at home in the AFC Championship. Um, and uh, so, yeah, but, you know, Tony, Jim Caldwell, Tom Moore, all those people, Saturday, Dallas, Stokely, Reggie, I mean, just list goes on and on. 
the equipment managers, the fans. You know, I, mean, I used to, I could, I knew where the same fans were sitting right behind our bench. You know, you go throw, or I'd be sitting by Reggie, and you'd see the fans there. Uh, you, you know, the, the, the section of blue that started kind of showing up on the road. You know, we'd go to Nashville or Jacksonville or Houston or St. Louis, and Colts fans were traveling. That was really cool to see. And look, Indianapolis is, is a football town it now. Is. And that was not really maybe the case when I came there. I right? would say you're greatly responsible for that. Do you realize the impact that you had on my city, our city, what you did for Indianapolis? Well, there's a lot of people, I think, that they were a part of that. But it, it, look, that's the kind of town you want to play in. You yes. want to play somewhere where they're talking about the draft and they're talking about who are we going to get in free agency. You know, you don't want them just talking about it in September. Hey, you want to go to the games? Yeah, maybe not. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it, it is. I mean, I, I've never. I've been to a lot of stadiums. I've never seen more jerseys worn at a stadium than at Lucas Oil Stadium. And it's, you know, it's it's current players, but you see you see the Reggie Wayne. You see, I mean, they're, 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 oh, they're, yeah. they're kind of loyal to the old guard as well. And uh, you know that Ring of Fame in Indianapolis now, I'd put I'd put our Ring of Fame up against anybody now. You know it wasn't always the case because there just wasn't as much history there, and so we kind of developed our own history there, and it was it was a special run. Well, your impact was amazing and is amazing. Speaking of which, uh, Peyton Manning's Children's Hospital. Yeah. How proud are you of that and what that's turned into? Yeah, extremely proud, Dave. I mean, I, I've said this before. I always loved team sports. Uh, I, I didn't like individual sports. I wanted to be around teammates and take coaching or whatnot. And that might be one of the coolest teams I've been a part of, right? The St. Vincent staff, Peyton Manning Children's Hospital. You talk about like the most incredible displays of teamwork, doctors, nurses working together, helping these kids try to get healthy and get home safe. And kind of my role, I find myself competing now, Dave, in, in fundraising, you know, trying to raise money for this project so we can get this resource to help be able to fight this type of illness or surgery. And so uh, it, it still keeps the juices flowing for me because you can make a difference. But I've been proud of that association, uh, uh, the staff there, and uh, gotten to know a lot of patients over the years as well. You're a dad. Kids are 10 now? Yeah. Wait, what flies. happened? I know. I was watching, uh, Marshall and I were watching uh, the video of me in the locker room. I think it was when Marvin was getting honored uh, in Indianapolis and Rich and I is interviewing me and Marshall's <laughs> trying to bite the microphone, right? I, mean, I it, remember it that. It seems like it was yesterday yeah. for me. Yeah. They're 10, going into fifth grade, playing, you know, all kind of sports. Uh, kind of like I did. They kind of play whatever's in season, right? We play flag football, basketball, baseball, soft, mostly play softball, volleyball, uh, tennis. And so um, it's fun. They, um, it's, you know, I think about, uh, you know, the year they were born and all that was going on with my injuries and kind of yeah. an unknown. It was the ultimate blessing uh, in disguise. Uh, you know, they, they came into my life at at the time that I needed them the most, and it was a real blessing for, for me and Ashley, and uh, uh, they've, they've given us a lot of joy. Are you a pushover, Dad? Or who, who's, who's the boss in the house? Uh, yeah. Now, see, my, my wife does not mess around, and then they come to me and, you know. Yeah. So probably, I'm thinking Ashley. Probably probably still figured it out. I think, I think they have kind of figured it out. It seems like they do kind of ask me for, you know, after they've been told no by her, they still, they, they still have the follow-up question with like me. That. So. I probably am. You mentioned 2011 and the neck injury and everything that happened. Um, did you think, wow, it can't end this way? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, I was, I, my, my goals were, I think, like what any NFL player should have as a goal was to play the, your entire career with the team that drafted you, right? It, it doesn't happen much anymore. Contracts have changed, but I was fascinated by Dan Marino. Miami Dolphins, Aikman Cowboys, Elway Broncos. So that's what I wanted to do. And just, but I, I never, you know, I had this, what was so strange about it, I had this unbelievable string of good health ever since I played here at Newman School. Uh, never had to miss a game for an injury, ever, right? And uh, a, lot of, a lot of good luck in there, a lot of good protection right. and blocking in there. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, in 2011, I, I have, not one, two, but you know, four neck surgeries, trying to kind of fix something that just couldn't quite get it fixed. And uh, I still remember, Dave, that uh, Colts Texans game opening of the 2011 season. I was in a hospital bed in California watching 
Kerry Collins start for the Colts, and I'm seeing Saturday out there snapping the ball, and Reggie out there in Dallas. And I'm not out there. That was tough. That was an emotional, tough, emotional time. And then I guess that was kind of the beginning of, hey, wow, this is, this is real. And, and I'm not out there, and I'm not sure when I can get back out there. And then it's just that season just became more of a struggle, realizing that, hey, the Colts, you know, and probably rightfully so, need to kind of think about the future and, and kind of where they're going. You get the first pick of the draft. Uh, Andrew Luck's available. So uh, Jim, Jim, Jim and I communicated about it. It was one of those situations where it was just going to be a tough either way. It, it wasn't a yeah. perfect scenario. No. But uh, look, I, um, uh, it, was a, it was a tough time. And, you know, Denver was great welcoming me. You know, the Colts had such an impact on our success in Denver because Denver basically said, give us the Colts playbook and we'll run all the plays you've been running in Indianapolis. We'll put some new things in. But like, I mean, I, I took most of the stuff with me because they're like, it's been working down yeah. there in India. We might do some of it here in Denver. Uh, but, uh, you know, even though I played for two teams, I, I just feel honored to have a great association with both. You know, I, I take pride in being a Colts ambassador. Jim Irsay flew me down to Tampa for the Super Bowl and the Hall of Fame announcement this year. He's flying me to Canton. He's throwing a party for me, right? So I, I'm even though, like I said, play for two teams, uh, my relationship with both organizations is strong, and that's important to me. Okay, we're getting close to being done here. Uh, you're 45, you can't retire. You got to keep that 401k <laughs> growing here, Peyton, you know? <laughs> Um, what's next for you? You got the College Bowl going on. Yeah, right? that's a cool show. Do you enjoy doing that? Well, thanks. Yeah, we're um, we we filmed it out in uh, in February and, and uh, did it in one week. Dave uh, Cooper and I had not spent six days together since we were here in high school uh, at Newman, and uh, so that was fun being with him, being around these smart, you know, bright kids was awesome. Yes. And the fact that they were playing for scholarships, that's just been a big part of my life at my alma mater, at some HBCUs. The impact that a scholarship can make on someone, it's a game changer, right? It allows their younger sibling to go to school because they got scholarship money. So that's kind of what hooked me. I never thought I'd be a game show host. That's not, not something I'm on not, the list of things I thought I, about I, you, you do I'm that. I'm not sure I really... I was very good at I had an hour pronunciation meeting before every uh, game and I was like I don't know how you pronounce that here's how I want it here's how I want it spelled phonetically in the monitor right you know? well you're believable man I so, mean you, you nail it I uh, that's good it's that I, training you had at channel 13 back in that's exactly right way back in 98 yeah, right uh, you know Dave I, I've kind of taken it sort of one year at a time in this second chapter I, I haven't said no to anything forever I've kind of said no, for this year, hey, let's talk about it again next year. You know, I mean, when you're playing football, I mean, that's all you're doing, right? That's what you want to do. And the second chapter, you know, I, I never had some master plan of this is what I'm going to do five years from now, 10 years from now. I've kind of, different things come up along the way. This was a fun show to do with my brother and it's a give back to kids with scholarships. I enjoyed doing that. I never thought I would do it. Still do the stuff with ESPN, the yeah. Peyton's places. I Which love that. Awesome. Yeah. Talking about the history of the game. So I've just kind of found different teams to, to be a part of. But, I, but most importantly, I've kind of protected some free time to be at Marshall's baseball game, right? I'm the first base coach, right? To be at Mosey's softball games. That's priority number one for me, but, but, but also important for them to see me busy and working as well yeah. so it's kind of that fine balance do you have interest in owning a team someday politics any of those things I, jumping out i keep i keep looking for the for like the three billion dollars that it costs to <laughs> buy an nfl team I, I don't know where it is if it's hidden in a separate account i, I just i don't have it i can't well, wait a minute it. you made some money off of omaha I can't and find others it. so i uh you know I, I was asked today you know look I, I, like i said i haven't said no to anything you know if, if an opportunity came about that it seemed like it'd be fun and, and, and you know look being a part of a team is always going to be attractive to me in some way right it's the it's all the things that I loved about playing the teamwork the competition right the working together to try to accomplish a goal so if and when something happens yeah uh, you know possibly but uh, uh, I think I'll always be a part of the game uh, in, in some fashion or another as an ambassador and uh, and that's important to me. Um, I'll talk quickly about TV commercials. What's your favorite? You know, you've done a bunch of them. Yeah, I mean, I, if you had to pick just one, just because it was, it was short, 
Uh, it was quick, which uh, everybody loves those, right? You know, keep it moving. But it was, we did that one for the ESPN Sports Center commercial with me, Cooper, Eli, my mom and dad. <laughs> yeah. It was up in Bristol. Uh, we, we were up there visiting Eli. We shot up to Bristol, did it. It took like an hour, but it, it was just so real that, you know, we're kind of getting this sort of, I don't know, boring tour, and Eli and I are back there. I'm kicking, you know, he's, I'm kicking him. He's giving me a wet willy. And my dad, you know, turns around and gives us that look, which I think any kid can relate to. Oh my yes. gosh, like we're in trouble now. And it was just like we were kids. And so my dad wasn't wasn't acting on his part. I mean, I, I've seen that look when he turns and looks at you. And uh, uh, it was just fun. And it just kind of a classic. I mean, Eli, somebody gave me a hard time. They said, well, you were kicking Eli kind of hard on him. I'm like, he weighs 230 pounds. You know, I think <laughs> he's, he's okay. Like, okay. I remember Eli like, giving me a wet willy and, uh, and the director, I was like, hey, sir, like, do we have that one? Can't we kind of stop? He goes, like, no, no, no. I can do it better. I can, I can really get in there this time. I mean, I come out of the commercial with an ear infection. So maybe not my favorite commercial, but I think one of the more enjoyable ones. And Saturday Night Live. We'll forever remember that. Saturday Night Live was a, um, you know, because of playing football, uh, it obviously presented the opportunity for me to do that once in a lifetime opportunity. And... I just went for it, you know, kind of like anything I've signed up for. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to yeah. do it. The, the cast that year was awesome. All those people yeah. are doing movies now. And um, it was, uh, you know, it was, and it, I've been asked to do it again. It's like the sequel is never as good as the first. <laughs> so I, I got out while we were ahead. Um, still get a lot of feedback. Um, uh, I got a, a email request the other day that the kid that I, was hitting in the back of the head, you know, with the football, on the way to, to the portalette, uh, is 26 now and, and getting married, and so they wanted me to do a video for him, and his name's Jack, and I basically said, Jack, you know, I threw a few touchdowns in my career, but for the most part, when people walk up to me on the street, they recognize me for hitting you in the back of the head, so thank you, Jack for putting me oh. on the map. It was an honor and a privilege to peg you in the back of the head. That was a funny weekend. <laughs> oh, that was a funny bit. Hey, thanks for the time. Uh, I want to brag about the school you went to quickly. When you walk in here, does your, I mean, wow, do you feel like you're a kid again? Sure, yeah, obviously the, I mean, the fo you've been fo back, football field's in the same same exact place. This this weight room was not was not here when I was there. The school has is, is grown and, and changed a lot, but the football field's in the same place. It's a great setting right here. In, uh, in, in New Orleans and think about, um, you know, playing with Cooper uh, my sophomore year. He was a senior, one of the most enjoyable years playing. All the years of playing pickup and backyard football, we got to do it on the field. Uh, went to kindergarten, you know, right over there uh, for years. So great memories here, you know, and, and, and you're talking about going into the Hall of Fame. The nice thing about when you go in, it's not just go, taking in Colts and, and Broncos, your NFL time with you, Dave. It's taking every place that's been a part of your life with you, right? Amen to that. Knoxville, yeah. University of Tennessee, right here in New Orleans, Newman School. All my high school teammates, are, or a big group of my high school teammates are going to be there in Canton. Um, uh, and, you know, good, good friends from New Orleans. So that's, uh, I'm looking forward to that part of it as well. Got the speech ready? I, I tell you, I am going to be uh, uh, on time and uh, of course short, you are. You're short, well, short and sweet. I mean, it's that they have harped on us this year, Dave, about six to eight minutes, and and, and that's it. Now, evidently, they've they've harped on it in years past, but just not. They haven't harped <laughs> enough. So, our class has made a little pledge to to be to be on time, to be respectful to the. To the to the person behind you, so um, I'm right there at seven minutes and 50 seconds. I'm going up to the edge because there's a lot of people to try to you know, you kind of kind of recognize them in groups. You can't do them individually, but a lot of people that I want to let them know how important they were to me. Amen. I want to respect your time and say thank you for all you've done for me and for our viewers. There's so many people you've impacted, and I, I know they would uh, want me to say thank you. I, I run into people all the time. This is my son Peyton. This is my daughter Peyton. <laughs> of course it is. And then I hear the story. So. Congratulations, well deserved Thanks, you, to you and your family. Let's would you show Appreciate me around your little bit sure, of school absolutely. here? Absolutely. Let's do it. This guy played basketball allegedly. Let's go check that out. I got nothing. <laughs> You're gonna show up. I got you... the, yeah. All right, so where are we going, boss? This is where you played high school hoops. So, yeah, so so this was the old weight room right here. This is where I used to 
kind of started started lifting weights and wow. uh, yeah this was kind of the baseball basketball locker room in here so i did yeah i i, I, I liked playing other sports I, I i think i'd encourage young kids to play other sports you know not just specialize so uh i didn't start playing football tackle football to the seventh grade but played uh uh, yeah, Randy Livingston, who's now the head coach, was a teammate of mine, right? all-American NBA yeah. player. He's now the head coach there. So uh, they won, won three state championships when he was there. So I love basketball. I love baseball. Uh, I always could kind of, kind of combine some of the things playing quarterback with baseball. Kind of a thinking man's game. Oh, absolutely. Kind of, kind of a strategy yeah. involved. So. Uh, so the gym's down here? Gym's right up top here. Okay, you might so, go up? Yeah. All right, so this is the basketball gym here? This is the basketball gym. Coach Fitzgerald, my back basketball, baseball coach. Miss Skirtage was the volleyball coach. And um, so these are kind of all the, all the banners um, of all the championships. No football. We got close in football. By, uh, you won 35 we'll games in three years, though. That's a pretty yeah. good high school record, man. We did. Uh, and I was on the... Were you on the 90... I'm on the, I was on the basketball. I was on the 90... 91, maybe? Well, you know, now you're asking for tough math, 91, right? 92. I was a senior in 93. I was a junior in 92. I was on the 91. There you go. Championship. Cooper was a starter. I used to come in for Cooper. I was a six man. I come in for Cooper, which it was like it was like I always. I get, I get this scowl from him every time I came in for him. Like I like I'd done something wrong. Like the coach put me in for you, and uh, but uh, that's funny. Yeah. You, you play could, guard? I was the I was the backup. Yeah, kind of kind of point guard. Livingston was the stud. He never never had to come out. Thank goodness. So I'd come in for him occasionally. I'd come in for Cooper. But then I kind of concentrated after that on baseball and, uh, and football. Uh, you were a pretty amazing baseball player, too. I don't know about right? amazing. Some, but well, somebody I, told me you had a chance to possibly get, do some recruiting. and. Yeah, maybe. I yeah. mean, you know. Although you did want to hop the uh, Yeah, exactly. The there's not a lot of upside to doing that. No, right? there's you know? no upside. So the All Larry game. Walker got COVID, and so I had to fill in. So <laughs> I'm a starter. I'm not a reliever. I love know, it. Dave? Cooper wore number 18 all four years at high school. So I wore number 14 the two years that we played together. That was my dad's high school number. And then in the middle of my junior year, Cooper uh, got injured um, at Ole Miss. He was having neck problems, had to have surgery. And I remember very well, Dave, it was a Friday night. We were playing a game and um, uh, he, he, Cooper came back into town and my parents had to tell him that night that his football career wow. was over. That was really tough. Uh, yeah. The way he handled it, though, Dave, had a big impact on me. Just his attitude, his, you know, it's it's a tough break, but I'm going to handle it. And so I always remember that. Every game that I played, every practice, treat it like it could be your last. And when I went through my injuries, that you know, that season we were just talking about, I tried to have a good attitude about yeah. it and handle it. So uh, anyway, so I changed the number 18 in the middle of that season. Really. In, in honor of him. And uh, Tennessee, it wasn't available, so I wore 16. And then once I got drafted by the Colts, no doubt about came it. back to number 18. I remember uh, I remember Jim Mora. Um, I was Are we at, okay? Okay, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I, I remember when, um, when, when I got drafted by the Colts, I asked Coach Mora, I said, uh, Coach, if it's okay, I'd really like to wear number 18. You know, that's, that's kind of my number uh, from, from high school. Cooper wore my dad wore it in college. He goes, sure, no problem. I said, what we all you already have a number 18 on the roster, uh, a guy named Nate Jaquette. Remember that yeah, name? I do remember. He goes, Nate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Jim Moore taught. He goes, yeah, I don't think he's going to make the team. You can have it. You can have it. So, <laughs> sorry, Nate. Oh, sorry, sorry Nate. Nate. But uh, oh. that was. Do you yeah. remember your first start on this field? You were a sophomore, right? Yeah. Um, you remember that? Yeah, my first, my very first start on, on the, uh, uh, as a high school uh, quarterback was on the road out of town at a, a school called Riverside. So, you know, we had a scrimmage jamboree here uh, earlier. It was really my first game. We played against Carr High School 
and they had a defensive back named Patrick Sertan, who yeah. I played against him in college at Southern Miss. I played against him with the Dolphins. His son just got drafted by the Denver Broncos. And so I think about that. Uh, I think about playing with Cooper. My parents would sit up there in the bleachers, uh, the same place they sit now to watch Cooper's two kids play. You talk about deja vu all over again. Kind of a late arriving crowd here at Newman, Dave, you know. <laughs> Kind of my, would, my, friends weren't, my, friends weren't, my friends weren't afraid to come and show up in the third quarter. Uh, you know, a, a, a lot of stuff to do here in New Orleans. That, uh, not quite the Operation school, Football buzz in not, back home. Not quite. Yeah, that's it. So, and, and the band doesn't play in the second half, which, which, they go which home. always. What's uh, up with that? Like, the second half is just as important as the first right, half. So. But besides that, it was a great place to play. And this nephew of yours, you have two, obviously, but the, the one that's the quarterback, yeah. the Arch. Is he the real deal? Is he going to? Well, I mean, I mean, he likes it. And uh, uh, he came to Denver a few weeks ago for, we kind of did a little Uncle Peyton mini camp and uh, <laughs> went and kind of put him through a little workout. So, you know, he's a great kid. Uh, his younger brother, Hyde, is a center. So Jeff Saturday is proud of that, that there we finally go. got an offensive lineman <laughs> oh, in the I family. So, you know, it's really fun for Cooper, who, who mentioned his injuries, who didn't get to play. Uh, you know, for his college football, so for him to kind of have this with, with two kids playing in high school and his son Arch being recruited is pretty special. Very special. Um, there's the Manning Award. You mind showing us that? Sure. You right. bet. And then we'll let you go. Probably oh, just go down, huh? This is your locker room. Your huh? locker room here. Yeah. Senior. Can you still pick it up? Senior patio. Somewhere in here. Senior, so, senior patio. Now, don't be don't be coming out there as a junior or sophomore. No. Senior patio. Senior. Patio. You can walk through. To the library, but you better keep moving. If you, if you stopped and loitered at all, this is my. This is kind of. It's kind of right here. It's kind of my locker. There you go. Yeah, you remember. Yeah, right on the, it's been a while ago. Right on the edge. Uh, Let me see if there's any secrets. No, out here. exactly. <laughs> Some books. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you a book guy? Middle school locker room there. You know, big big step to come through those doors to the. Oh yeah. To the high school locker room. You were a pretty uh, scholarly so, athlete though, weren't you? Weren't you pretty? I had to work at it. I will say that I, Cooper kind of could charm his way into a B plus. Uh, I had to kind of grind. I, I was always envious of like my friends that didn't have to study. They just knew the answer. I, I had to, I had to study and work do the it. work. So, uh, but it, it was a good, good preparation for the rest of life. There you go. Boy, this is absolutely beautiful. Is this the old part of the school? I guess? Yeah, this is, so this is, Newman's been here since 1903 and uh, wow. uh, a lot of, Great this history cool. in there. So uh, this is pretty neat. There's a Manning Award. Oh, there's the Newman Award. Where is the, that? Where's the Manning? So the Manning's right to the left. Um, Am I right? Oh, right here. Okay. I can't read okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, here you go. Here's the Manning Award. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah. So they renamed it after after Eli finished. Cooper graduated in '92. I was in '94. Eli was in '99. And um, it's kind of the, it used to be just called the Outstanding Male Athlete, and they changed it to the Manning Award. So, um, you know, I mean, it, funny thing now is like the people that are winning it now, like they're either, you know, dad went to school, you know, a few years older <laughs> yeah. than me, right? Yeah. And my, my parents are friends with their grandparents. And yeah. so, real proud of this, real proud. We have, there's two uh, scholarships here at Newman that, that come to an a incoming, uh, freshman and stays with them all four years. One's the Manning Scholarship, and just as of two years ago, we started the Olivia Manning Scholarship. That uh, so Not your mom. That's pretty neat. real proud of that. Yeah. Uh, uh, the first Manning Scholarship winner uh, went to Dartmouth uh, last year. So uh, that's a great gift uh, of the gift of education and to no give other kids this experience at this school is um, something we're proud of. Oh wow, you're a distinguished alum here, Peyton. This is pretty cool. That's just a it makes you feel old is what that does so uh, <laughs> but uh no that was a great you know a great honor i mean walter isaacson um uh you know some great you know new orleans leaders michael lewis who wrote you know the blind side oh yeah uh, Moneyball. uh went to newman um um that's pretty there's, cool you know, a lot of impressive resumes more than mine but uh yeah that was special uh uh, to be honored and uh, yeah like I said I, I went here for 13 years you know kindergarten through 12th and just gave me a good kind of base going into college and you know it was 
it was academics. I used to get frustrated today because it was on the field at four, off the field at like 5.30, no questions asked. I'm like, well, there's some more plays we'd like to run. They're like, no, everybody's got to get home, do their homework. The but, but I was more, uh, I was thankful for that. Uh, let's see. I think you may have been pushed to the upper level. Pace. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think they got cut off. I okay. think you're like me. We're so old now that you get bumped to the second floor. Got you know it. What I mean? That's probably a good yeah. thing. I had a bad hair day. I think, <laughs> you're kind of glad that picture's not so, around. Exactly. Oh, I love it. Fantastic, man. This was my first fantasy football draft in here, though. I will say that. What now? Oh, you did when you were a kid. <laughs> we, had, we had the draft. This is the lecture hall. I don't know if they. This is freaking hilarious. So yeah. it's like a lecture hall? Lecture hall. We had, we had like on a Sunday, had the... Oh, that's hilarious. Fantasy. So you had your first... F first year of fantasy football, like, you know, 1990. When that started happening? Two, yeah, we had yeah. the draft here. I drafted Jim Kelly, my quarterback, <laughs> right in here in the draft. And uh, Your memory is unbelievable. <laughs> it really is. It is really took unbelievable. debate class in there. I Did think, you ever take debate? Yeah, I think Saturday. Saturday was... Saturday and I had a lot of debates. So <laughs> that's where I had my platform there for <laughs> learning how to uh, let's see the affirmative and the yeah. negative. Yeah, all yeah. the all the all the proper proper ways. I don't to think debate. Saturday has a chance against <laughs> you, by the way. <laughs> Until we get in a wrestling match. Uh, well, yeah, there yeah, you go. I, you I, got, I got no help there. Oh, love it. Fantastic. Pride of '94. You really want us to show this? See if you can find me. Oh, you're gonna challenge me here. This is gonna be hard. Right smack in the middle there. Oh my gosh, how can you miss you? <laughs> that that's funny. You had a pretty big class. I did. And knowing you, you could probably name half these people. I'm not gonna put you on the spot, but knowing you, you probably could, couldn't you? You keep in touch with peeps? I do. I've been to, I've been to I've been to every um I've been to all of my reunions except one. We started uh, wow. uh, the first year they had it. We had a ten year, two thousand four, and the girl running it um, said it was going to be. Long story short, we were playing the Buffalo Bills on the night of our reunion, and so I called her. I said, "Atlanta, I, you know, why, why are you having this in, you know, November? You know, why don't you have it like in the spring around Mardi Gras?" She's like, "Well, not everything revolves around you, Peyton." And I was like. I feel like we're back in high school, you know, having the same argument. So I had to miss the 10, but I made my 15, I made my 20, and then this past, uh, uh, on the 25th, I had to miss. I, uh, we went on a little safari in Africa, and so went to that. But uh, the cool thing is that uh, there's eight guys in here, Chip, Baldwin, Thad, Nate, uh, that are all coming to Canton. Oh, uh, all, all gonna all gonna be there. So these are high school teammates, and a lot of these, a lot of people in this picture, I went to school with from kindergarten through twelfth grade. Uh, you know, so I, I I could, if you really, I I could probably I could name everybody in this in this picture because most of them I've known since I was since I was five years old. That's so, pretty cool. Um, um, yeah, it makes it feel like it makes this big town seem like a small town. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. 